This is a super easy three-step process to quickly and easily paint your miniatures for your board game. To prove how effective and easy this method is, let's see how long it takes for me to paint the entire War of the Ring board game miniatures, all 272 of them. Step one is priming your miniature. Now, when I first started painting miniatures, um, I thought this step was optional, but really it's not. What priming does is it creates this outer surface that covers and protects your plastic for your miniature. And if you don't prime, honestly, your paint's not gonna stick to it. Um, you're gonna get frustrated with the painting process. So I know this is one more thing that you have to do, but priming your miniature is a, a necessary step and it's pretty easy. Now I'll be priming my miniatures with an airbrush just like the one that you see here, but you don't have to spend money on a, on a airbrush. You can grab a paint can, spray primer. You can get a Rust-Oleum uh, flat black, something like that would work just fine. Now, something you do want to be careful with that is there is aerosols in those spray cans. Um, and I've experienced this before, especially with board game miniatures, where with you spray those miniatures, if you're too close and you haven't shaken the can well enough, um, that aerosol can actually get onto the plastic. And some of those plastics um, will kind of become gummy and will stick a little bit. So you want to be careful if you're going to use a spray can. Um, but I avoid that by using an airbrush here. Um, I know that this is another tool. It may seem like it's expensive, but really this is a $30 airbrush. Um, and it's fantastic. And I, I use it for all sorts of different painting techniques. Now we're just using black primer and we're using even coats um, to build it up until the entire miniature is painted black. So step number two is called the Zenithel priming step. So we're gonna take our miniature that's already been primed black, as you can see here, and we're gonna prime it again, but this time we're gonna prime it from the top. We're gonna to, we're gonna prime it from either the directly above or kind of at a 45 degree angle, which is gonna create natural highlights at the top and natural shadows at the bottom. Um, this is a critical step, and actually I think this is probably the most important step to follow in my quick and easy um, miniature painting process. This is what that Zenithel step looks like in action. So you're really just, you're painting from a top down, just hitting the tops of the miniatures as you paint. So now we're to step three, which is my favorite part. This is where we actually add color to the miniature. Um, we're going to go ahead and apply paints to it. I'm going to show you that here in a second, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, what I, what I use is, is called speed paints. Um, there's also contrast paints. There's also express colors. I think green stuff world even has dipping inks. Um, but what these paints are designed to do is they're designed to kind of apply a base color, add some actual color to it, and then also act as a shade as well. And so that combined with your zenithal highlighting is really gonna make your miniature pop and it's gonna really look like you've done a lot of work on it that you haven't necessarily done. Um, it's a great process. Um, the results are fantastic. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. So now we get to the fun part and the actual painting of the miniatures. So you get to choose the color that you want and really I, I consider this kind of like um, color again a coloring book. You really just want to use your synthetic brush and stay within the lines. You know, pick the colors that look good to you, and you'll be amazed at how much your miniature will start to pop with that zenithal highlighted undercoat. <laughs> Those last miniatures, those ends are kind of an organic shape, which is a lot easier to paint, in my opinion. 
but that same process can be used for miniatures that have a lot of detail like these Rohan warriors um, really it's the same concept you just want to stay in the lines um, treat it just like a coloring book you know you pick a section just very carefully um, take your time and use your brush and stay within the lines and you'll be surprised at the fantastic results that come out now I time myself to see about how long it took for me to finish each miniature in this process and it took me about seven minutes per miniature um, give or take and it definitely depended on which miniature I was working on so for the War of the Ring game that has 272 miniatures that took me about 32 hours of paint time to paint all those miniatures which I know may sound like a lot but these results uh, they just make me want to play the game they they really pull me in and I couldn't be happier with this These miniatures really turned out great and were a lot of fun to paint. If you found this video helpful at all, or at least interesting, please like and subscribe to the channel. War of the Ring is a fantastic board game and a lot of fun to play, but it does take up a lot of space. If this game looks interesting to you, but you don't have the space, check out this YouTube video here where I show how you can create your own ultimate portable gaming table.